My guest tonight is a comedian, actor, and now author of the new book, The Last Black Unicorn. Please welcome Tiffany Haddish. <laughs> like to enter with a dance move. I like that. You know, what I, you, know, you know what I like about you? I've always wondered what the sun would be like as a human being, and I think I've finally met that answer. You are... Boy, you, you better walk... stop. I'm ovulating. <laughs> you walk into a room, and you just, like, I don't even think you people understand how amazing... To, like, up close like this, you are one of the most amazing human beings. And then I read the book, and I am in love with you, Tiffany Haddish. Like, your stories are <laughs> amazing. You're funny. You're poignant, and it's sad at the same time. Like, like, like the start of the beginning, you grew up as a foster kid. Yeah. You lived this really tough life, and you constantly, throughout it all, use comedy as your tool. How important is comedy in your life? Comedy is the instrument and the key to keep me being positive and alive. Like, I don't know about you guys, but it feels so good to me to laugh, and it feels even better to see other people laugh. Like, my favorite thing in the world is to see people teeth. Like, I don't know what... <laughs> Look at the... Oh, you got some pretty teeth! Like... <laughs> I probably should have been a dentist, but I don't want nobody to hurt. And I love... <laughs> I love to hear, ha, ha, ha. Like, that's my favorite right. sound. And I know that when you laugh, it's like massaging all your organs, and it's just, like, lighting you up. And I think it's so dope. And even if people laughing at me because, um, I don't... Even if I don't want you to laugh and you laughing, I'm like, well, at least they laughing. <laughs> you, yeah, but you, I'm healing them. You, you, you also had an amazing experience in comedy. I mean, you, you, you're, in, you're in foster care, and you have... Uh, an opportunity to go to a comedy camp. Yeah. And at the comedy camp, you meet Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor, man. I remember when I, fir when I first saw him. I, you know, like, when you're young, you have really no concept of how, like, powerful or how great somebody really is. Right. And, like, I didn't watch all his movies or hear all his records at that point. I just knew he was a comedian and an actor. And he came in in his wheelchair. He rolled in there, and I was like... I knew he was rich, and I was like, ooh, rich people got wheelchairs. I need to get one of those. <laughs> and now I know better. But... <laughs> I know better, but still. <laughs> But still, I was on stage telling jokes in front of him. In the middle of me telling my jokes, he stops me. He goes, stop, stop, what are you doing? I said, I'm telling a joke. He goes, no, you're not. I said, yes, I am. He goes, no, you're not. I said, yes, I am. He goes, no, you're not. I said, well, what you think I'm doing then? He said, you're getting on my goddamn nerves. That's what you're doing. <laughs> I said, what? I'm clutching my pearls like, oh, my God. What do you mean? And he said, look, people don't come to comedy shows because they want to hear about your problems or politics or religion or what's going on in the world or about celebrities. They come to comedy shows to have fun. So when you on stage, you need to be having fun. If you're having fun, they're having fun. If you're not having fun, they're looking at you like, what the hell did I spend my money on? So have fun. And I have taken that philosophy with me and do that in everything that I do in life. Like, no matter what, right. I try to have a good time. And it shows in everything that you do. I mean, like, there are stories in this book, because you have had every job, you have done everything. One of my favorite stories, and I hope you, you have an audio book of this as yes, well, Yes, right? I do. Because I would buy both. I'm not even it's joking. It's good in traffic. It's, it's, it's good in traffic. It's amazing, because you have the story where you talk about joining the Church of Scientology, <laughs> or trying to join the Church of Scientology. I was homeless. I need a place to live. Yeah. <laughs> but then, you quit the Church of Scientology, and they let you go. <laughs> but the way you tell the story, because they, they don't ever let anybody go. They let you go. Woo! Because, see, I don't do bunk beds, y'all. So, they, so what, they, they got the bunk... Because you tell the story in the book, and, I mean, I won't spoil it, but they've got these bunk beds that they want you to sleep in. Yeah, they want you to sleep in bunk beds. And I don't do bunk beds. Like, I did bunk beds when I was in foster care. I'm not doing bunk beds as an adult. I'd rather sleep in my Geo Metro in the cold than sleep in a bunk bed, because bad things happen in bunk beds, brother. <laughs> I'm telling you. So... <laughs> Oh, so, man. when they told me that's where I had to sleep, I started protesting. I was going up and down the halls, yelling, I ain't sleeping in no m bunk bed! Like, and that was just loud and obnoxious, and they was trying to get me on the meters and stuff, get me to do the meters. <laughs> they was like, we need to get that negative memory away from you while you hate the bunk beds. And I kept saying to all my, I don't like bunk beds! I don't care! You not finna beat my ass in no bunk bed! Like, so... And, uh, <laughs> then they let me go. They was like, we can't handle this. Oh, man. <laughs> this girl is off the chart. This meter is breaking. We can't do it. You have the ability <laughs> to take a situation that anybody would consider a failure and turn it into the greatest success. Uh, one of my favorite stories in the book is you talk about uh, a guy that you were dating, and, uh, he was cheating on you. And he was cheating on you with a woman named Bertha. I think a stripper named Bertha, right? <laughs> yeah. And... But... But what you did... No, no. What you did to get back at him with Bertha is, the, is one of the greatest things ever. Could you tell the people what you did. I, 
boo booed in his shoes. <laughs> Cause he was putting me through a lot of dookie, so I decided he need to walk in it. <laughs> I would never do that now. Just know that, Trevor. I would never, I would never do that now. Why wouldn't you do that to you? That's what I'm talking I wouldn't about. Do that baby. To you. That's right, baby. That's right. I wouldn't baby. do that to you. Also, I took his bitch and I um, start pimping her. Uh, basically, I had her doing she because she was doing like little flicks or whatever, right. pornos or whatever, and he was taking all her money. And I was like, "Look, I'll hook you up, and I'll just take ten percent." <laughs> this is like, like some people right now do not understand the craziness of this story. I will pause. Like, listen to what this person just said. Her translate, man, translate. Her man was cheating mm -hmm. with a woman named Bertha, who's a stripper. Bertha on the side was making porn films and wasn't getting paid for them. And so Tiffany steps and goes, Bertha, you are cheating with my man, but I realize that you are being exploited. <laughs> so I will step in and I will be your agent. <laughs> and I will pimp you out so that you get your money. And now you are pimping the woman who was cheating with your man. Like, how do you think of this as an idea? And how do, and Bertha goes and she rolls with you and you made Bertha money. Yeah, yeah. So much money that her friends joined in as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, like, I just feel like there are human beings who have, like, cracked the code of life. You're, like, in, you're the real Neo from The Matrix. That's I'm, who you are. I'm the last black unicorn, my friend. That's... <laughs> Even though I'm a magical creature. You are, you are in every single way. When, like, when we're reading this book, there's so many stories that you take us through. You know, go through your childhood. You go through you, uh, you know, working. You know, there's, there's, there's obviously the hustles with Bertha. There's one of my favorite stories of you, uh, working at the airport. Yeah. As, uh, did you work as a baggage handler? I was a customer service agent. I worked at the ticket counter. I also worked in the baggage department and at the gates, honey. I was multi-talented. <laughs> I'm excellent with customer service. Please, please tell me how you came to date a baggage handler who had one arm, I believe. Yeah, yeah, he had. Okay, so you're talking about Roscoe. Okay, Roscoe! If you out there, I miss you and I love you, come back to me. Okay, so Roscoe. <laughs> Roscoe had one regular strong arm and he had like one of them little baby hands. Right. And um, he was strong in his arm and he was a baggage handler. And I don't know why, they, like, I'm, you know, that, hey, equal opportunity, right? So they um, hired him and he was my baggage handler. And he used to be like every day, like, Tiffany, you're the most beautiful woman in the whole airport. And like for six months, he was like hitting on me. He would bring me flowers. They had Aww. ants in them and stuff, you know. Um, <laughs> so I know he was stealing them out of somebody yard. Um, he would buy me jewelry. He'd give me necklaces. They would turn my neck green. He would bring me filet of fish sandwiches because he knew I love filet of fish. <laughs> and uh, he went to all these things. And uh, I had um, pooped in that dude's shoes and broke up with him, right? And Roscoe was hollering at me, and I was just like, man, I need to start dating it again. And so, uh, Roscoe, Roscoe, dang, you really like this story, huh? So, uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> the cameramen are killing themselves. <laughs> yes. So, so um, Roscoe was like, I really want to go out to you. And finally, I said, Let, let's go out, Roscoe. And he was like, really? Are you serious? Oh, my God. OK, meet me on the corner of Manchester and Sepulveda. We're going to catch the 217 bus. And I was like, wait a minute. I got a car. I got a GL Metro. I'll pick you up. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I went and picked him up. And uh, I figured out where he got all them flowers from. From the, in front of his house, there was like a lot of roses and stuff. And it was a big old house. I was like, oh, OK, wait a minute. He might have an inheritance. And um, <laughs> 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 but turns out he lived in like he lived in a group home for people with like disabilities and stuff and um i remember the girl answered the door and she was like oh my god you are so beautiful you are so beautiful and she's like running around and like tiffany's here she's so beautiful and i was like i gotta come over here every day because this is how you should be greeted <laughs> and um and then everybody started coming out the woodworks and i was like oh man does, does he live with the x-men because it was like <laughs> Everybody was very unique in, um, in their own way. <laughs> and, uh, and then he came down the stairs, and it was like he was the head man. Everybody's like, run, go, run, go. <laughs> and uh, he's like, shut up, guys, shut up. <laughs> he gave me some more flowers. Those had spiders. And uh, <laughs> we, went, we went to this really nice restaurant and, uh, in, in Hermosa Beach, California, called Hennessy's, and they had karaoke that night, right? So it's like a restaurant bar type situation. And uh, we was the only black people there. So um, you know how that was. Uh, everybody. <laughs>
everybody was looking at, at us, but well, mostly right. at me, like, girl, you are so brave. <laughs> and um, So when he's singing this to you, do you, like, does he, does he win? Does he, he, he gets? No, that's not when he won. Now, let me tell you what, what got it in. Okay, so then he come back to the, he come back to the table, right, and he sit across from me, and he look at me in my eyes, and he grabbed my hand with that one strong arm and put that little dead <laughs> hand on the table, right? And he looking at me, and he's like, Tiffany, you're the most beautiful girl in the whole wide world. I feel like the most luckiest man alive. For a guy like me to be out with a girl like you, this is the most magical night in my life. And if I die tomorrow, I will be the most happiest man because I'm here with you tonight. And he start crying, tears start coming out of his eyes, Aww. little snot bubble came out his nose. <laughs> and I was sitting across from him, I was like, mm, I'm gonna <laughs> the out of Roscoe. <laughs> interview that's enough for this book. <laughs> the Lost Black Unicorn is available. It's, if this is not number one, you, you guys don't know good books. <laughs> Tiffany Haddish, everybody.